We're going to head off to the layers panel and I'm going to double click right here and name this reference. I'm then going to select the template option and this will dim the image to 50% and press on OK. I'm going to create two layers and name them outline and color. We're going to work on the outline layer for this. We're going to head off to the color panel and we're going to give this a dark blue stroke with about six points thickness with rounded caps and corners. Now let's start off by outlining the illustration. So to start off, I'm going to use the oval and from the center point, I'm going to hold option or alt on my keyboard and create this oval. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. I'm then going to hold option or alt on my keyboard to duplicate it downwards. And I'll do the same for the bottom. And I'm going to resize this and align it. Perfect. I'm then going to duplicate this one more time. And this will be for the liquid part. I'm going to select this shape and activate the direct selection tool. And click on this anchor right here and delete it. I'm then going to activate the pen tool and I'll connect these lines together. For the bottom part, I'm going to take the direct selection tool and I'm going to delete this right here and this right here. And with the pen tool from this point, I'll just connect it at the top like so. Since I only created the left side, we're going to take the shape and we're going to go right here and activate the reflect tool. I'm going to go to the anchor point in the middle, hold option or alt on my keyboard and click. With vertical selected, I'll click on copy to make a mirror. Now let me do the same for the liquid part. So I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to keep this there for now. I'm also going to make another copy and resize it and bring it down. And then I'm going to delete the top anchor point and like we did before, just connect it. This is looking pretty good. Now let me create this part right here. Just play around with the size until you get something you like. Now let's create this dome like effect for the top of the container. So for that, I'm going to do a perfect circle by holding shift and option on my keyboard. I'm then going to delete this bottom anchor and I'm going to drag this downwards. And as you can see, it aligns perfectly. I'm going to select this anchor at the top and slightly bring it downwards, just like so. I'm going to duplicate this shape right here and kind of size it according to my sketch. I'm going to bring it to the right and drag it down as a copy. Delete this anchor and with the pen tool, bring it down and select this anchor. Perfect. Select everything, right click and group, and then drag it here. And as you can see, it's a little bit thick, so I'm just going to resize it a little bit and align it. Now, as you can see, there is kind of a gap over here. So I'm going to start by doing something right now. I'm going to select the shape. I'm going to right click and ungroup it. I'm then going to select this shape right here and do Command C and Command F, which basically duplicates our shape. Now I'm going to zoom in right here and I'm going to select these three anchor points and bring it up. Perfect. I'm also going to select these and slightly bring it downwards. Now that we have our straw created, I'm going to select everything and rotate it slightly to the right and do something like this. Now with the help of the shape builder, I'm going to start by deleting some unnecessary lines. So let's start right here. I'm going to select these shapes right here and activate the shape builder tool. And I'm going to hold option or alt on my keyboard and click on these red lines to delete them. 
I'm also going to delete this line. And for this part, I'll delete this line and this line. Reason is because the straw will pass in front of this. And we're going to go down here and I'll do the same. Now to make the illustration look a little more interesting, I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to select this stroke and with the pen tool, I'll add a couple of anchor points and delete this. I'll do the same for here. Now, before we go any further, I still want to delete this line, which I forgot earlier. So I'm going to select this with the shape builder tool. Let me just delete it. Now with the help of the width tool, I'm going to taper off these lines. Select this tool right here, click and drag, and then taper off the line and you can move it. And I'm going to resize it to make sure that my stroke does not surpass my outline. just like so. So basically our outline has been created and we can now apply our colors. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. All right, so let's apply the base colors to the illustration. So for starters, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna go to the layers panel right here. And this green square right here, I'm gonna hold option or alt on my keyboard to duplicate it down to the color layer. I'm then gonna lock and hide the outline layer. Working on this layer, we're gonna select all. We're gonna go to the tools panel and we're gonna select the live paint bucket tool. It's gonna say click to make a live paint group. You're gonna click and now you can select each individual area and apply a color. So using my swatches panel, which I already created the colors for you, I'm gonna apply the base colors. So let's start. Using a fill and no stroke, I'll start applying colors right here. I'm then gonna apply a darker shade right over here. For the liquid, we're gonna give it a light pink at the top, a mid-tone for this part. I'll put a darker shade of blue for this part. And the straw will be yellow. And the top of the straw will be a lighter yellow since the light will be hitting it. Now the color was added, you'll see that everything is grouped together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the top menu under object, you're gonna click on expand. With these checked on, you're gonna click okay. We're then gonna click again, right click and ungroup. And if we select the outline, you'll see that it comes right off and you can delete it. I'm gonna go to the layers panel. I'll turn off the reference and turn on the outline and you'll see that the outline is back. In order to individually add more colors, well, you'll see that it's all grouped together. So right click and ungroup it and you'll see that each part is separated into individual shapes. Now the base color was added, we're going to add some shadows and highlights. And for the highlights, we're going to imagine the sun or the light coming in from the left side, which means that this side is going to be lighter and towards the bottom right of this, it's gonna be darker. So let's start by adding some shadows. So using the pen tool, I'm gonna to create a shape like this. I'll bring it down and just go around like this. I'm gonna make this a darker color. Hold Option or Alt on your keyboard to delete the excess shape. And just like that, we added our shadow. Let me add a highlight. Let's do this using the same method. Perfect. Now let's continue applying highlights and shadows. So for this part, I'm gonna use the pen tool once again, 
and create a diagonal line going downwards. Perfect. We're going to make this dark blue. Now we want our shadows to go above the liquid, which means that this part is also going to be like a darker pink and this will be an even darker pink. So in order to do that, we're going to have to take these shapes and I'm going to go to the top menu and do copy and paste in front for a duplicate. I'm then going to select this shape and these shapes. Bring up the Shape Builder tool, delete the exterior, click on this, 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 and this. Now we can select this shape, apply a darker shade of pink, and a darker shade of pink for this part. Let me add some highlights to the left. Just like that. Let me add another big highlight here. So using the ellipse tool, I'll create this oval, place it like this. And then I'm going to go to the transparency panel and make it 50% opacity. I will apply another rounded highlight at the top, just like this. Let's apply a shadow to our straw with the pen tool, create a line going downwards. We're then going to select all the shapes with the shape builder tool. Just delete the excess. I'm also going to apply a shadow within this. So do a copy and paste in front. So command C plus command F, bring it down. Make it a darker yellow. And just like that. And I'm going to apply a highlight to the left. Finally, let's add a shadow at the bottom here. I'm going to use my darkest shade of pink with an oval. I'll just apply it like this. And I'm going to make sure that this is in front. I'll apply another shadow here. And I'll send it backwards. Now we're not done. What we're missing is a tapioca to finish off the bubble tea illustration. And I'm going to show you just how I'm going to do this. So on the outline layer, I'm going to use the blue stroke and create a perfect circle. Now let's zoom in. And I'm going to make a copy and paste in front of this circle. So do command C and then command F. We're then going to remove the stroke and add a purple fill. And we're going to send them backwards. I'm then going to do command C plus command F and then do command F once again to create three shapes superimposed on each other. I'll move the top one like this and resize it and select the two. And you can see it creates like a moon-like effect. With the Shape Builder tool, we'll just get rid of the excess and make this darker. I'll then apply a highlight. Just like this. And I'm going to make it lighter. Now that it's done, I'll select it, right click and group and apply it to the illustration and send it to the color layer. You want to make sure this is above. Now holding Option or Alt on your keyboard, just create duplicates and add them accordingly to the illustration. We could change the orientation or the rotation slightly. And finally, since these are going behind the outline, I'm going to go back to the layers panel and drag this up and it will be above. And finally, I'm going to apply some small details just like this. 
And there you have it. This is how you create a bubble tea illustration in Adobe Illustrator from sketch to vector as a step-by-step -step tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this type of video and if you did, please let me know in the comments so I could do more of these in the future. I hope you have a great day and cheers everyone.